All righty, folks, let's talk about evictions increasing in the city of Las Vegas and talk about corporate landlords being bad actors and issuing a bunch of junk fees. Mike, what do you got? So this video was sent to us from Nadine Ostrowski. She's somebody who follows your channel, has sent us videos in the past. And I always tell people, if you want to have Zuber react to what people are putting out there online, just send us a video and we'll queue it up. So in this video, yeah, you're right. This is, comes from a, a congressional hearing and they're talking about some of the bad actors in the landlording realm. And so we kind of are going to delve into the ethics of being a landlord. There's no secret that a lot of people really think what we do is being a parasite. So we'll see what they say and then we'll react. Let me give you an example. Since May of 2020, there are 123,000 eviction filings in Southern Nevada. Nearly 60,000 evictions were filed this past year. That's 100. 60% increase since before the pandemic. Uh, just last month, Southern Nevada had nearly 5,000 eviction filings. Now, I know that it's not just the high rental costs and housing costs, but there were extra surprise fees that I heard from these families that were having an impact on them as well. Let me just give you an example. Uh, I had heard from families that uh, they, they're, uh, some of these uh, companies were charging a multiple family application fees for one apartment even when landlords knew that the apartment had already been rented. They were charging applicants for credit reports that the property manager didn't even end up purchasing or had no intention of purchasing. They were charging an application fee for minors living with a prospective tenant. Uh, Ms. Siegel, we heard from you on and on and on. Uh, this is an issue that is happening. These are junk fees. These are junk fees. And I would question these fees. So, Mike, two things. Eviction's up 160%. And again, the ethics behind people treating tenants poorly and charging application fees even when the units have already been rented. So there's a uh, I'll do the last one, the second one first, because that I just I it, it's not OK. Uh, I, I They're truly junk fees. I think it's criminal. Right. Mm -hmm. per, I don't know if it's actually criminal, but it should be criminal. Mm -hmm. Um to charge someone a fee to do something that you either don't do, i.e. the credit report, or can't, you can't approve, is blatantly wrong and um, not okay, right? It's just not okay. I, I would never do that. My team would never do that. Nobody I know hopefully would ever do that. Um, mom and pop landlords, to a large degree, would never do that, I would hope. Uh, these corporate landlords are a problem. Right, they're a for-profit machine that is trying to, you know, throw top loon revenue in and reduce expenses. And um, it doesn't surprise me that they have these junk fees. It doesn't make it right. I think I've been pretty clear. It's wrong. It's terrible. It should be illegal. There should be huge penalties. In fact, it wouldn't shock me, and I would support this. If somebody gets caught doing these junk fees, there should be a fine of a hundred x. Right. If you run a credit, if you have a credit check fee of 25 bucks and you never run it and you get caught, you should you should pay 25 grand. I mean, at the end of the day, if there's no downside or penalty to these folks, that's why they're doing it. So let's let's create some pain for the bad actors. So that's that. Evictions are spiking is an interesting one, because if you compare 2019 to 2023 without acknowledging that evictions have been on hold for two years, you're kind of missing the point, right? There were there were, there were were people in the eviction process that should have absolutely been evicted. They just should have, but they couldn't. What we are now seeing is a huge spike in evictions. It's just kind of how the, like if you put a dam in front of a raging river, it stops the water. Then if you remove the dam, you know, the water starts rushing and eventually you know, gets to the end, which is an eviction, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, evictions are up. They're probably up across the country. It's probably not just a Vegas thing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, you know, when you stop evictions for two years and you kind of turn them back on, you're going to see some, a pretty big spike, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that makes a lot of sense because, as you mentioned, if it's just all that pent up demand, it has to go somewhere. There was landlords who were waiting and waiting and waiting. And even in the healthiest real estate market, there's always going to be evictions. And if you said, nope, for two years, those just built up and now it's all coming due. 
if yeah. that level stayed consistent moving forward over the next few years, then I would have some cause for concern. But I think you just have to work through your backlog of evictions and see if it stabilizes before you come to any you know conclusion. And that's yeah, the I mean, in, in my in my portfolio, I can tell people like when Fresno finally lit the evictions up, we we had a a month where we had triple the normal amount. All of those except one were you know, we're, we're ones that should have started somewhere between 12. Like there's one person in one of my units that was not paying for 18 months. Guess what? They should have been out after three months, but because I couldn't, they all got sent at the same time. So I think a lot of this is just the, the wave not being, you know, not letting the stream go or whatever it's called. People love to talk about the ethics and morality of being a landlord, but they fail to talk about the ethics and morality of being the type of tenant who lives for free for 18 months just because they can. Shady. Uh, the final point I would make when it came to those junk fees is, is you reference mom, pop landlords like me, somebody who self-manages the duplex that I house hack. One of the things that I always did is I would make sure that the tenants, when they would apply, they applied through a third-party website. They paid that website to do their background check. I even used a specific website that could then, after I got their results, they can actually forward that application and results to other people who may be looking to rent or they may be looking to rent from. So they wouldn't have to pay multiple times. Never had one person complain about that. Uh, Mike, we do have another video to react to. And this is a great video. The next segment, you, I've got you dead to rights wrong, completely wrong. You're on tape. I'm excited for it. I can't wait. <laughs>